this is Roger <coughs> with the croaks. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> I could start again, couldn't I? Yeah. Can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, let's have a laugh sometimes. Today's subject I can only half do. I get asked a lot about types of wood for mounting orchids, which I can't really do because I use cork bark virtually across the board. There's an odd piece or two in here of other stuff and the only other stuff I've knowingly got in here personally that I've brought in rather than buying one already mounted. Um, I've got some English oak in here which I collected myself from forests, from fallen trees. They come down in storms and things like that. Um, and I've also got some hawthorn which was from um, the workmen were cutting down some trees on the side of the road and they had the big you know, chainsaws cutting them up into sections to put through the shredders and things and I just said could I have a piece and I took some bark off of that. So there's some hawthorn in here. Um, both of those are hardwoods technically. Um, if you venture away from bark to actual wood you do need to be careful because some, obviously you're going to pour water all over it, you're going to keep getting it wet and some wood has toxins that will leach out and damage your orchid roots. Um, I don't necessarily know which ones so I can't say this one's okay and this one's not. Um, so you take your chances really um, but under normal circumstances, most of the orchids that we grow are epiphytes and they would grow on trees. They don't grow on wood. They actually grow on bark, gnarly crevices, moss on the surface, other plants growing around. It's not wood. Yeah? I don't think there's much naturally grows on wood. Ivy will <laughs> grow all over your shed. Um, so. I tend to stick to the cork bark in the main simply because it's a clean wood. It takes donkey's years to rot, if it ever does. <laughs> it does eventually go, but it takes an incredibly long time. And it's light as a feather, yeah? And it doesn't hold water. That's why it floats. It can't absorb water. It's lighter. So um, it's good stuff for mounting. Um, so, as I said, I can't really do woods. Um, natural barks that I could collect in the forest, oak springs to mind because it's got the crevices, beech wouldn't be very good, it's almost dead smooth, um, oak as I've said, hawthorn would be okay, um, but it, it needs crevices, that's the only thing I will say, and bark is a safer bet than wood without the bark on it, and you shouldn't be using stuff out of a timber yard that's been treated. That's an absolute no-no. <laughs> so if there's any form of preservatives or treatments or anything like that, that's a no-no. But apart from that, I can't really help much. And the next part of this is I get asked an awful lot, can I mount this or that orchid? If it's an epiphyte, yes, you can mount it. That's how it grows. Now, most of the orchids we get to talk about either on the Facebook page or, or, or on my YouTube channel, are epiphytes. There's a few lithophytes, there's a few that can be either, and in amongst, a, there are occasional terrestrials turn up. I mean, there are some Masdevallias that are technically terrestrials. There are some Paphiopedalums that, that grow in the leaf litter on the forest floor. They're technically terrestrials. Just, they don't tend to bury themselves in the actual dirt bit, the soil. They're in that looser leaf litter, but they're still on the ground. Lithophytes, they're on the ground or on a cliff face. So, um, but the main thing with our orchids is that they need to hang on to something. And if they're epiphytic, then they naturally grow on branches and trees, with a few exceptions that are classed as twig epiphytes. So they, they're hanging on to very little. And there are some Draculas that are found, when you get into the montane forest, everything is, is wet. It's, it's dripping with moss. There's moss hanging off the branches. And some of the Draculas are growing in that moss hanging off the branch. 
They're not touching the branch. They're just hanging in the moss. Um, it's amazing how they stay there, quite honestly, but they do. Um, so, epiphytes. What is the logic of mounting an orchid? Well, the first and most obvious one to me is that it don't seem to be doing so good in a pot. So unless you can find out a good reason why it's not doing in a pot, uh, not doing well in a pot, like that media is 10 years old and falling apart and crumbling in your hands, which should never be allowed to get like that, yeah? The, one of the main reasons for a plant not doing well in a pot is it's not happy with the media it's in. It's not happy with its root run. And most problems with orchids, quite honestly, are below the base of the plant. They're the bit underneath. Um, and things go wrong in pots. A mix can be too light and airy. There's too much air. It's the type of root system that needs a compact media. It needs to touch. Everything needs to touch. So it needs a very small media with not too much air. You know, and then there are others that have been packed in so tight they haven't got any air, so they rot because they need air. So the choice of media for the root type and the plant type is critical in a pot. In a mount, all that goes out the window. <laughs> if you put it on a mount, your choices are, am I going to put a bit of moss on there or not? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> or, oh, hang on. Are we going to use zombie moss or are we going to use live moss? Yeah. And if you're going to use live moss, where are you going to get it from? You're going to buy it or you're going to go out and find some. You know, it's everywhere. Moss. Just find some somewhere that's shady. Yeah, and you'll find moss. It's, it's everywhere. It's um. You walk past it. Nobody takes any notice of moss until you stop and look, and there it is. And there's loads of different types, different shades of green, um, from. Tiny carpet moss looks like a billiard cloth, you know, um, you know, right up to stuff that grows quite long, straggly. So, if it's a, an epiphyte, it'll go on a mount. Your choices are, am I going to have moss? If so, how much and what type? But it's not going to make a lot of difference. Um, the only thing you mustn't do is the same logic as in a pot, is if it's the type of plant that needs plenty of air around its roots, it doesn't need burying under a mountain of moss. Because that's not going to be that much different to sticking it in a pot. It's too much, too much moss. So apart from that, you can't really go wrong. Um, uh, a lot of people have said, I can't mount this because it's too big. There's no such thing. I could mount that if I wanted to. In fact, that would do incredibly well on a mount. It would need to be a big mount. <laughs> and it could be deemed clumsy to handle because this has been grown in a pot. It has a <sighs> flatness to it. Yeah? Things have grown out in all directions. Yeah? So to pot it, to mount it now, how? How would that be mounted? Are you going to tip it over like that so that it points outwards? So I don't want to drop all my bark. Yeah? And then you'd be able to get all of the roots on. Are you going to try and mount it like that? That would be very clumsy to do. And all these roots around this side would be nowhere near the mount. Because only one side would be touching the mount. And it would be very difficult to secure against a mount upright like that. That needs some water. <laughs> but nothing is too big. In younger stages, something like, oh, oh fragrance, that's that um, angel heart again. I mean this is a brassier. This has not long been potted up, so it hasn't established its root system properly yet. It is doing it now, but with something that's big, the ideal time to mount it is before it gets big. Let it get big on the mount. The trouble with brassiers on a mount is this extension to the um, rhizome. Each new growth is an inch, inch and a half, sometimes two inches away from the previous pseudo bulb. And if that grows away from the mount, pointing directly out, you know, 90 degrees away from the mount, the roots will go aerial and the next new growth is going to hang. It's 
back again. <laughs> but yeah, there isn't really, you can't really say something's too big to mount. And define big. That is a big mount. It's not a big plant, and yet it covers the mount. Each cane on that is two centimetres at the most, and the leaves are about three centimetres. So each bit of that plant is small. Actually quite a miniature for a dendrobium. The overall plant is large, all its pieces put together, and it's a large mount. And it's quite heavy as a consequence, thick and chunky. Um, but it's not really a large plant. <clears throat> Stay. And then you get, do you define a large plant as like that or like that? Um, I mean, this is, a, this is a large plant. It wasn't like this when I mounted it, but it was when I turned it round because I got snails on the mount and it didn't have a good root system. So I took it off and put it round the back of the mount. So this is now on the back of the cork. There's nothing wrong with the back of the cork. It's a perfectly good surface. And since it went on there, it's grown a much better root system. Now this is a bush, but I mean, there's canes on here two foot long. And some of them are going upwards. Some of the older ones are hanging down. Some of them are sticking straight out from the mount. That takes up a lot of space, but it's wispy. It's not heavy, it's a wispy plant. But these are a little troublesome in a pot because of the way it grows. Here's another point with mounts. Why do we have mounts? We could hang them up. So we start going vertical and you can get an awful lot more plants in your space by going vertical. How many people have thought of doing that with a mount? There's nothing wrong with a plant going flat on a mount. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now you can get your big plant on the mount. Go back to that Oncidium I picked up and I was worried how I was going to attach it. Well, let it sit on the mount. Let it sit flat. Have a large flat piece of mount and let it sit on there. But then what have you really got? What you've really got now is a shallow pot. <laughs> Technically, you know, from the or orchid's point of view, I'm growing flat here as though I was sat on the top of a branch. But I haven't got many places to put me roots. That's a shallow pot, isn't it? It's also a mount, if you want to do that. Actually, that's too far in. That's a bit tangled up, that one. I have to hang that so that it twists a bit, so that the top ones that haven't arched over yet don't actually touch the roof. They can touch it, but I don't want them pressed up against it. Um, so, if it's an epiphyte, it'll mount. The Oncidium types, smaller ones, grow well on a mount. Um, and they actually look pretty good. Um, they, they have a natural look to them, and they do grow straight out from the mount. Um, they would grow flat, again, yeah, uh, they grow quite happily like that. The beauty of the mount is it's, it's damn near impossible to overwater the plant. So you're not going to rot your roots because this stuff dries. I mean, this was watered yesterday, this moss is almost bone dry. And it's not getting any more today either, it's cold. And it is cold today, I don't want to stay in here too long. It's, it's 19 in here today, and the other side of the camera it's 22. <laughs> That's where I want to be, in there. Uh, it is a bit chilly today. So, I can't really discuss types of wood because I don't know. Um, you just have to do your Google searches, um, you know, see if you can find perhaps somebody who's done videos that uses lots of different wood. Um, Todd uses quite a few different types of wood because he has I don't know whether he, he still does, but he has a guy that collects different pieces for him in the forest and brings them round. Insa would probably know a lot about wood as well. He's an outdoorsy forest man. 
you could lose him in a forest and he wouldn't be lost. Whereas some people, you'd never see him again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't worry about mounting orchids. Um, and don't forget the concept of putting a mount flat. If you are a troublesome water waterer, you know, <laughs> you're in charge of the floods, basically. If you overwater naturally, it's just how you are, take some effort to stop doing that. It really does. Somebody needs to take your watering can and your sprayer away. <laughs> Make you sit on your hands for a week. Don't worry, they won't die. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't watered anything today yet. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> it's difficult. I know, you know, I've known people that really do struggle um, with chucking too much water on the orchids. Far, far more orchids die from too much water than not enough. Um, so, they will mount. How you attach them to the mount is uh, a, a preference. You can use um, elasticated string. I've seen Lynn using that. That works quite well because it, it, it can never be that tight. Elasticity in, uh, reaches a point where it cannot stretch anymore. That would probably be too tight. So if it's still got a bit of bounce in it, it's not that tight. Um, that works pretty well. Lots of people use fishing line, including me. Um, you can wire things on with relatively thin wires. No, not a lot of point in using great big, thick, chunky stuff. Not, hold, not holding the steels up on a bridge, you know. So it doesn't need to be that strong. It's just a plant. Um, you can use ordinary string. Um, I've known people um, cut up um, ladies' tights into strips because that's, again, that's a stretchy material. And it will eventually rot because you have to bear in mind once the plant is firmly attached on the mound it doesn't need to be tied on anymore whatever you tied it on with is done done with which is why the wire is a little bit of an overkill to an extent because the wire will last longer than the wood will one thing though don't use wire that's going to rust in any shape or form so it needs to be coated plastic coated or I use bonsai wire when I use it, which is coated with something, I don't know what, but it doesn't rust. I think it's also made out of aluminium, which doesn't rust. But um, go steady with wire and rust. Rust will damage roots. Um, so stay away from that. Um, ordinary string, if you're going to use string, use green string. Don't use purple or blue or bright orange or something. It does have to have an aesthetic look, what your mounted orchid. That's what you're really trying for on a, a mount. You're trying to make something look as natural as possible, as near to what it might look like in the wild as possible. So bright purple string wrapped round it doesn't really fit the bill, does it? So, uh, so there we go. So I'll leave it at that. It, it was just a chat about, I, I get asked a lot about, can I mount this or that orchid? Well, yes, you probably can. Um, unless it's a terrestrial, in which case you, you can't get the roots in a happy place on a mount. Um, I have seen people use a mount with a half pot. So basically you have your mount and then you have a, a traditional pot cut in half and then attached to the mount. So you can actually put proper media inside that half pot. Um, personally I don't see the point. But, uh, oh, it must have just reached 20 degrees. The fans have come on. And I definitely don't need that draft in these lower temperatures. <laughs> You're off, mate. Um, yeah, so don't worry. But, I mean, there are some things, things like tolumnias do better mounted probably than in a pot. A lot of catlias will do better mounted than in a pot. Um, unless that pot replicates the root arena that you get on a mount. In other words, lots and lots of air and incapable of being soggy. That's the thing a mount gives a plant, is it's incapable of being soggy. Um, if you've got too much moss on your mount, it may stay wet a bit too long depending on the plant. If it's a plant that doesn't like to dry out quickly, like an oncidium type that's actively growing, then quite a large amount of moss is pretty good stuff. Um, Another thing that I've changed over the years, I used to get my mount and I used to put a nice layer of moss on the mount. 
Then I used to put the plant on and spread the roots out and put some more moss on and tie it. What happens to moss after a period of time? It goes off. How do you get the moss off that's underneath the plant? You've got to unmount the whole thing. So what I do now is I put the plant on the mount with no moss and put the moss on the top. And if ever I've got to get it off, I can tease it out, most of it, away from the thing. Um, after time I found that if, as you water a mount, gradually the moss flattens down a bit and little pieces get washed off as you water it. And after a couple of years, you haven't got anywhere near as much moss as you started with. So there's not, not so much to actually go off. And if you use a live type of moss, it doesn't ever go off. But it can die, at which point it will go off. Um, like being kept dry too long. Moss needs to be damp. So there we go. Um, I've got, just going round, I've got Oncidium types, many. Dendrobium types, many. Arengus. A Bulbophyllum. Tolumnias, uh, Cattleyas, um, what else have we got? Cattleyas, that's Cattleyas, Cattleyas, Lalias, same as Cattleyas, Dendrobiums we've done. So there is an assortment that's mounted. Things that I've got that aren't mounted, not many. I haven't mounted a Mazda Valia yet. They can grow pretty well on the mount if you can keep up with the watering. They don't do bad, um, and they look natural as well. They do look pretty good. Dracula's possible, I suppose. Um, the spikes coming out from the base of the plant and hanging downwards can still be accommodated on a mount, rather than an open pot. Um, Vanders could be mounted. Um, trouble is, the mount would be huge. Think how long vanda roots get and the plant keeps getting taller and taller. So they could be, but perhaps not as good. Oh, I've got a Cycopsis mounted. So, uh, yeah, you could mount, like I said, almost anything. In here, the only true terrestrials that I can think of are my two Deesas. And they are true terrestrials. They need a um, peat base type um, media. So uh, they are real terrestrials. There's nothing else in here that um, really comes close to a terrestrial. Um, I mean, my Cymbidium will be coming back in here soon. Some of those are terrestrials, but some are also epiphytes. Some can be found as lithophytes. So, um, some where you get combinations, I mean, I've got uh, something that grows typically as a lithophyte, which I've got mounted, oh, which isn't actually grown as well as I expected it to this year. Oh. <laughs> so, Flipping brace thing was hooked up on the thing. These are some tiny little um, Dendrobium lodigesii kikis. Um, they haven't grown as well as they should have done this year. Not quite sure why. Um, some of them are still growing. Um, there's no point in attempting to rest this unless the plant just stops. Um, because these plants, are, you know, these are just too small. Um, now, this naturally grows in a hump and it produces long arching canes that then grow kikis and the kikis weigh down the cane until they touch the ground and they're often found growing on the ground as lithophytes um, and they can create quite a large mound um, they are also found on trees but when they're found on trees they're usually found on the top of a branch or in the fork of a branch not on the trunk. So that's not a natural way for that to grow. Perhaps that's why it's not growing so well. Perhaps I ought to just chuck it on a shelf and leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, but that, that one, um, probably uh, in the wild, it's found more often than not on the ground, but not necessarily on soil, you know, not, not a terrestrial as such. So, uh, so there we go. But... Um, Mounting orchids, the technique for mounting orchids is not clever, it's nothing special. All it needs is practice, quite honestly. Um, 
The way I would recommend, it's not, it's going to sound a bit silly, is when you've got a plant that you're going to throw away because it's not very good, use it to practice mounting because you can't hurt the flipping thing, you're going to chuck it out anyway. And it, it is a bit fiddly. That's getting a little annoying now because that's been going round now for some considerable time. Just go and land, will you? Um, somebody training again. Um, it just happens to be a noisy one. Um, some of the planes that are around, they, they're relatively quiet. But that one's just noisy. Um, right, so um, practice and, um, you know, make sure whatever you're going to wind round to tie it on um, is long enough. There's nothing worse than needing to go round another two times to hold the moss in place and you run out. Then you've got to either undo that bit and throw it away and start with a longer bit or tie another bit on and a knot halfway along is not ideal. So it, it takes judgment and practice. It's not clever. It's just practice, quite honestly. Um, I mean, I've, if you look round here, everywhere you, see, everywhere you look is mounts. And this isn't all of them, because some of them have gone to other people. Some of them have died and been chucked out and other plants have been mounted on them because I reuse them. Um, so I could probably do them in my sleep or with my eyes shut because I've done so many. But it didn't look that smooth when I first started. Trust me, <laughs> I didn't film mounting an orchid for some time because I kept messing it up. The number of times I mounted an orchid and ended up at the end of it looking at it and thinking, I don't like that. And I'd take it all off and start again. So, you know, it, it, it practice, that's all I'm saying. And while, while we're on the subject, early this morning I actually filmed some kitchen time out there, which is mounting a couple of orchids, um, different, different ways of doing it as well, two different ways of doing it. And that was being done at quarter to seven this morning, having been up since three o'clock. Don't ask. <laughs> quite annoyed it might even show in the video that I wasn't in the best of moods but I'd completely run out of things to do and it wasn't even daylight yet so I thought well I'm gonna do something in the kitchen because I'm just fed up <laughs> with being up and running out of things to do I don't normally get up that early but I was awoken um, yes yeah, so that will be tomorrow's video a bit of kitchen time I've still got some repots to do not many um, and some of those that are in pots now might end up being mounted. So, um, anyway, yeah, a chat about mounts, mounting. I can't do types of wood. All I can do is say that I use cork bark in the main. Um, I will... Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, I'll do it anyway. It's no big deal, is it? I'll put a link to the place where I get my bark from in the description. Um, it's basically a guy who lives um, in the UK, actually lives on the Isle of Wight. When you look at the map of England, it gets fatter as it gets down the bottom, and halfway along that bottom edge is a tiny little diamond-shaped island, island. That's the Isle of Wight. And I live on the mainland just to the left of it. <laughs> just a bit of geography stuff. But anyway, he owns um, property in Portugal, including a cork plantation. So the cork bark that he sells has come from his own trees. Um, so uh, whatever the expression is, um, I've forgotten the word now, ecologically sourced, but you know, it's no damage was done. It's his own trees. The cork is harvested on a rotor basis. Um, the trees regrow their bark and get harvested again after about 10 years or something like that, and they're cycled round. So it's his own bark from his own plantation. Um, and you can buy any size from that guy, and he shows photos of the actual piece you're buying. It, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, and you can buy a piece like, you know, over a metre tall by, you know, sort of 30 centimetres wide. It costs you a bit. <laughs> Um, and unless you're going to use it, to me, paying a lot of money for a large piece of cork seems a little bit silly because the chances are if you grow orchids, the first thing you're going to do when you get it home is cut it up into smaller pieces. Buy smaller pieces. <laughs> it works out cheaper in the long run. Um, and choose your pieces carefully. Look at it and think, how would I position plant or plants on there? And often you'll see a piece of cork 
and it will naturally split down the middle and each piece will go in two. You end up with four reasonable sized pieces from one piece of bark. And obviously if you buy a sort of medium sized piece and cut it into very small pieces, you, you, know, you get half a dozen or more. And then it can work out quite cheap. So I'll put the link to his um, website. On the website, I believe the postage is free. It isn't really, it's included in the price. Because he also sells on eBay, and on eBay, the, exactly the same piece is quite a bit cheaper till you add the postage on, and then it's the same. So he, he gets the same whichever way. It just feels nicer <laughs> if the postage is free. Um, and last time I looked, um, he was actually away for quite a long period, actually out in Portugal, so he wasn't selling at that particular time, but he may be again now. Um, so uh, there you go. Um, there are other places you can get cork bark, um, and I don't know about whether he posts to other places apart from the UK. Um, he probably posts to the EU, but would charge more for postage. You'll have to look that up if you're interested. But. Um, I haven't found a better place to get bark from in the UK. Um, so. And um, I mean, bark might be quite difficult to get in some countries, I don't know. I mean, cork bark as a tree growing naturally in the wild, it tends to be a Spain and Portugal thing. I don't know how far north it comes before it's too cold. Um, and obviously too far south is too hot. <laughs> um, but that's where I know it grows quite, quite prolif pro prolifically. Oh, no, more coffee. Right, so uh, it'll be a kitchen time for tomorrow and um, chat about mounts. Um, questions that I haven't covered, chuck them in the comments. I can't guarantee I can answer them. And if it's about a specific wood, I'm not risking saying yes it's okay unless I know and I don't know many at all. So that question is probably not worth asking. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.